Hello again everyone from Tokyo Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, today's video is going to be another instructional video and this one I'm going to be showing you how to replace a POD or pad of death in a Yashica Electro 35 uh, rangefinder camera. Uh, the POD is a common problem in these cameras, one of the most common problems uh, when it comes to buying one of these cameras and then finding out that uh, the shutter doesn't work right. Uh, I just got this camera in the mail and uh, I put a battery in it and as you can see the battery check lamp illuminates and when I try the uh, shutter at different apertures. Let's stop down to f16. The slow light is coming on. And if I move it up to f1.7, the over light is coming on. But uh, uh, the shutter doesn't seem to be operating. It's uh, like in this case, it's sticking. In this case, it's it's firing too fast. So it's definitely not working right. I'm not ex I'm not 100% sure that it's the uh, uh, pod or pad which is bad in this camera but uh, I'm pretty sure so what I'm going to do is uh, take it apart and replace it now uh, the POD or it, it pad of death sounds like like a really uh, big deal like a dangerous or some kind of crazy thing but all it is it's this simple urethane uh, square this little thing that I have here this is the POD and what it is is just a urethane spacer which fits between the uh, shutter button assembly and the plunger assembly on the bottom which comes in contact with the electrical contacts. If this uh, urethane spacer becomes rotted or deteriorated or falls out, uh, the gap closes between these two assemblies and they don't make proper contact uh, with the switch on the inside and therefore the shutter doesn't operate properly. So what we're going to do is open up the camera clean out the spot where the POD is and replace it with this one here. I got a whole bag full of these uh, from uh, someone who was selling a bunch of old Yashica parts. Uh, if you don't have one of these, it's not a problem. You don't have to have it made of any particular material. It's quite a simple thing. Uh, it's about two millimeters thick by about five millimeters long by about, I don't know, three millimeters deep. And uh, when I didn't have these, uh, when I didn't have some of the old uh, Yashica PODs on hand or pads, I simply used rubber from these old Mamiya lens hoods, which was uh, about the same thickness, and I would just cut them using a pair of uh, wire cutters to the right dimensions and slip them in. You can also use uh, leather. For example, if you have an old leather watch strap or camera strap or something which is about two millimeters thick, uh, you can cut that into shape and simply use a piece of leather. As long as it's roughly in the same size and you can be as much as half a millimeter off in one direction or the other, the camera will still work properly. It just has to be in the ballpark. Uh, luckily I still have a few of these originally Ashika ones left, but if not I would just simply use this uh, rubber, which to me seems to be more durable than the uh, urethane anyway. But anyway, uh, uh, this urethane is still in nice shape. It, it's uh, supple and smooth. It doesn't uh, it doesn't crack or anything. So this, once I put this in, the camera should be good for a number of years more. So uh, we don't need a lot of tools to do this job. Uh, in a few years ago, when uh, this problem became widespread as these cameras were getting older, the recommended repair process was to remove the leatherette, the top and bottom covers, the lens assembly, unsolder the wires, and everything so you could get easy access to the, uh, I guess, the spot where the pod was located. But that's a lot of work, and most people don't have the tools or the know-how to do that kind of repair. How I'm going to be doing it tonight is simply removing the top cover and reaching in kind of, you know, through the gap. Uh, there's enough of a gap to work with on the top and simply replacing it with common tools. Uh, the tools we need for this job, we need a pointed spanner like this one. And this is used for two things, to remove the uh, cap screw off the film winding lever and this other cap screw, which goes around the uh, film speed adjusting dial. <coughs> 
If you don't have one of these tools, you can make one with a pair of tweezers, which have been sharpened to points at the end, or an old pair of needle nose pliers, which you can grind sharp on the tips. Uh, we need a Phillips head screwdriver, which we'll use to remove the uh, screws holding on the top cover. And we'll need a slotted screwdriver to remove uh, this cover here for the battery check lamp. If you have a later model Yashica, it will be held on with Phillips screws, but since this is an earlier one, not the earliest one, this is a kind of a mid-range one, uh, this uses a combination of uh, Phillips screws and slotted screws. The first generation one use all slotted screws. The last generation, the uh, GTN and GSN, use all Phillips screws. But uh, Otherwise, the same process for replacing the POD uh, applies to all cameras. The, the first version to the, the latest, latest ones, all of them used uh, this POD inside them. So, uh, let's go ahead and... Oh wait, one more thing. I forgot the other tool. Uh, important one. Ah, This tool here, which I made myself with a uh, screwdriver, which I got for one dollar from Amazon. What I did is I got this small, uh, maybe one millimeter uh, or 1.1 millimeter slotted screwdriver and I just bent it in, in an angle like this uh, to be something like a dentist pick. If you have uh, picks or something like that dentist pick in your toolbox, then you don't need one of these, but if you don't have one, it, they're not difficult to make. All right, so let's take a break for a moment and then we'll get started. All right, so let's go ahead and start. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove the uh, film winding lever. I can use my pointed spanner. First, I'll try with my thumb. Sometimes you don't need the pointed spanner, but in this case, I will. Sometimes it's just on thumb tight and you can give it a good twist with your thumb and it'll come off. So uh, take off uh, the screw. Underneath the screw will be a compression washer. Under the compression washer is the lever and under that is a spacer with a slot in it. I set those to the side. Next thing I'm going to do is replace the, uh, or remove the film rewind knob. And since this is an earlier camera, I have to pull down on this latch to open the film door. On a later model camera, you would pull up on the film rewind knob. I'll stick the screwdriver between the forks here on the inside and take this off. Uh, this part will fall out on the earlier cameras. On the newer cameras, it won't. There's a washer, which is always under here. Uh, just put it back on inside the uh, film rewind knob so you don't misplace it. The next step is to remove the screw on top of the film speed dial. Okay, so there's the screw. Underneath that is the dial itself. Uh, actually a, die, a face with the numbers on it. I'll just remove the whole thing, but uh, it comes in three different pieces. You have uh, the dial, you have a small compression washer, and then you have uh, the face which goes on top. So they, they kind of come off in that order with the cap screw on the top. Next thing we have to do is remove the screws to remove the top cover. I'll remove all of the screws and I will also remove the battery check switch cover. I do this because if I don't and I take off the top cover, the red button will fall inside the camera and then I'll have to take it all apart anyway just you know to put it back in properly. So I'll do this now rather than do it later. And I put everything in an old uh, filter like this. That keeps it kind of organized. Next thing to do is lift off the cover. Normally it just lifts off like so, like it's coming off now. Uh, sometimes when the camera is put together at the factory, they use a rather strong glue to hold on the leatherette. And sometimes the glue comes up underneath the top cover and glues it into place and it's very difficult to get off. But you can get it off by simply rocking it off. Sometimes it's still difficult to get off. So sometimes I'll use a uh, lacquer thinner and I'll put it on the gap on the front and let it sit for about 15 minutes and then work it off and it'll usually come off. All right, so we'll lift off the top cover and there will be a wire here which uh, attaches to the uh, flash sink section on the top of the side cover. 
And looking inside here, the I can see the pod, which is right here, is rotted away. Uh, I completely expected that. Um, I don't know how close I can get here, but uh, uh, this is where it's located, right where I'm pointing. And maybe that's a better angle to look at it. So what I'm going to do is uh, scrape out that old material and get it cl as clean as I can. And then I'm going to slide in my replacement pod and glue it into that spot. So uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to uh, depress the bottom part of the switch. And this will open up and give me some space to work. Normally when you... Uh, wind the shutter and you depress it, part of it will lock down and when you undo it, uh, the switch will slide back up. That gives you that kind of thunking sound when you are charging uh, the shutter and which you are supposed to hear when you are, when the pod is good. It can make that sound whether the pod is good or bad, so that's not a, a foolproof way to check it. What I want to do is I want to push the bottom half of the switch out of the way, so I'll stick the screwdriver on the pod and just push downward until it locks. Okay, and it's out of the way and locked down to the bottom. And the next thing I'll do is I will scrape out old pod material. And there's just a tiny bit of it left. Let's see if I can lift it out. Now uh, that's pretty much all that is left of it. It looks like it's just the glue which is left over and the material, the pod material itself is gone. So using my uh, little pick here, I'm going to just kind of scrape and make sure that all the glue is out of the way. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this is uh, one of the earlier cameras, so this, this had time to like dry, rot, and deteriorate and leave almost nothing left, which makes my job a little easier now. But uh, there's the metal bracket here, and the POD is glued uh, to the underside of it. And just to the right, there are some wires which run from the uh, shutter and the switch down here up to the light meter and there's a kind of a small opening there where I can kind of reach underneath and that's where I'm going to put in the new pod. So I'll go ahead and get that ready and what I want to do is first uh, try to get some glue on the inside there and I use this glue here it's a Bondo G17. It's kind of a uh, rubber, rubberized plastic glue, kind of soft. It doesn't dry super hard. And using my uh, pick here, I'm going to reach inside and being careful not to touch anything except what I want to touch, I'll apply a little glue. And I'll do this a couple of times, make sure I have enough. Okay, the glue is on there and I wipe off the tool and get it a little bit clean. But I'm going to put just a tiny bit of glue right like so. and. I'll go ahead and take the, my replacement pod and kind of hold it like that. The glue holds it in place on the end of the pick. And now I have to kind of uh, sneak it into place without touching anything. And this is the sensitive part.
I always say less is better, better when it comes to glue and that's in the good in this case. Sometimes I need a little bit of uh, help to get it in. Alright, so it's sticking in the right spot and the next thing I want to do is I want to wind the shutter a little bit because by doing that the bottom plunger will pop up and will squeeze the pot in the right place where it's supposed to be. And like there, and it just thunked up to the top and I look and make sure that it's just in the right spot. Go ahead and hold this up a little closer. And the new pod is in place. That's all there is to it. So, uh, this camera needs a good cleaning in the top, but I'll do that later. I already explained how to do that in my uh, repair video for the Yashica Electro 35 GSN. What I want to do now is put the top cover on and test it and make sure that everything is working. Okay. And I don't have to fully reassemble the camera. I just want to make sure that uh, what I've done so far uh, repairs the problem and hopefully that's all there is to it. Compression washer, cap screw. Okay, An auto. Okay, let's try it out. Okay, firing properly at F16. Alright, uh, the shutter is working properly and the camera is good to go. All I have to do now is clean out the viewfinder and all that, clean out the inside of the lens, uh, clean out the back side, uh, replace the light seals and this camera will be good to go. Uh, it wasn't too long of a job, it took me about maybe 15 or 20 minutes to do it and uh, this, is, this repair will bring a lot of old Yashikas back to life. Anyway. Uh, this camera will be up and running pretty soon. I'll be listing this for sale on my uh, new online store, japanvintagecamera.com, or you can find it on my Etsy or eBay stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. If you'd like to see more uh, videos about vintage Japanese cameras, uh, camera repair, or photography in Japan, uh, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.